So one of the most talked about features on Nvidia's new Turing GPUs is the new NVENC video encoder. With more gamers looking to stream on Twitch than ever before, I'm interested to see how much better the new NVENC encoder is compared to the old one, and also compared to traditional X264 encoding via the CPU. So Nvidia are claiming that just with a single Turing GPU that you can achieve a pro level broadcast quality for your stream, whereas before that would have required a multi-core CPU and created a significant load on the CPU, which would have created uh, quite a lot of frame rate drops. So today we're going to see how much better is the new Turing and Venk encoder compared to the old one. We're going to see how it compares to X264 encoding, and we're going to see sort of what quality you can expect. So I know the title says RTX GPUs, but the new NVENC encoder is also included on the Turing GTX cards, and currently that's the GTX 1660 and the 1660 Ti. And yes, it's the same NVENC chip too, so aside from the memory speeds and GPU performance, the encoding capabilities should be near identical across the board. Now Nvidia are claiming significant visual quality improvements in streaming over the 10 series GPUs, but more importantly, even over CPUs using the X264 fast preset in OBS. To give some rough perspective here, to run the X264 fast preset smoothly without a significant impact to your gaming, you'd want to be running a high core count CPU like the Ryzen 2700X. For those who aren't familiar with these quality presets in OBS, essentially the slower preset that you use, the more your gaming experience is going to be impacted, the more frames will potentially be skipped on the streaming end, but in return you get superior streaming quality. Typically the X264 medium preset is regarded as the goal for professional streaming quality, but usually requires a very high core count CPU like the Threadripper or Skylake X CPUs, or ideally a dual system setup. So from a budget standpoint, if a mainstream GPU like the GTX 1660 Ti can deliver comparable streaming quality but with less load on the CPU, that's a pretty big deal. So the exact GPUs that I'm using for this testing are the GTX 1080 to represent the old NVENC hardware and the RTX 2080 to represent the new NVENC hardware. Of course, the performance difference in terms of FPS is significant between these two GPUs, but since that's not directly what we're comparing between the two, it doesn't make a difference. For the X264 encoding comparisons, I've used the Ryzen 2700X. It's an 8-core, 16-thread CPU, which most of you are familiar with, and I think it represents what most streamers would go for if they're considering a CPU-encoded stream on a single PC, within a mainstream level budget. Now, although I really wanna focus mostly on image quality comparisons today, I did first want to start off with some context here in terms of how much frame rate we're actually losing with each setup. So here we're looking at how much frame rate is retained in game while streaming from OBS to Twitch, compared to gaming while not streaming at all. So starting with the streaming set to 1080p 60fps at 6000 kilobits per second, both the NVENC encoded streams lose about 5% of average FPS and about 10% of the slowest 1% of FPS, but more notably there's no significant difference between the old and new NVENC hardware. That is, I found about the same percentage of reduction in performance while streaming on the RTX 2080 compared to the GTX 1080. CPU based X264 encoding on the other hand takes takes quite a chunk out of the frame rate, at least on the presets that I've tested here. So we've got about a 20% reduction in average FPS for the faster preset, about 25% for the fast preset, and about 30% for the medium preset. Again, this was done with an eight core 16 thread Ryzen 2700X. So if you have a weaker CPU, you'd see a much larger hit. And with a stronger CPU, you'd see less of a hit. When reducing the streaming settings to just 720p 60 FPS at 3,500 kilobits per second, we see much less of a reduction in frame rate, mainly on the CPUs. Whereas previously we were losing around 20 to 30% of frame rate, we're now only losing about 10 to 15%. It's a big improvement, but it's still significantly more FPS lost compared to streaming with the NVIDIA GPUs using NVENC, which are now only losing about 4 to 5% in FPS overall. So the performance hit is much less while streaming with NVENC, but the big question is, what about the streaming quality? Now let's start by comparing the old NVENC encoder to the new NVENC encoder to see whether there really has been an improvement. For the quality comparisons here, we'll be using Apex Legends for a few reasons. It's one of the most played and streamed games at the moment, and it's also very fast paced, which means that there's going to be a large amount of new pixel information to process for each frame. 
So with our most demanding streaming settings here at 1080p, 60fps at 6000 kilobits per second, we are seeing some difference between the two. With the two streams side by side, the GTX 1080 stream is noticeably more fuzzy and blocky on the left, whereas the RTX 2080 doesn't seem to suffer from the same amount of compression. When we analyze a couple of frames side by side, there honestly doesn't seem to be much significant difference between them. There is slightly more smoothing of textures on the RTX 2080 though, but that's really it. The biggest difference is when the streams are played side by side in real time, in which case the Turing and Venk stream is a lot easier to watch due to being less fuzzy. So at 6,000 kilobits per second, the new Turing and Venk is slightly better, but when we reduce the bit rate to 3,500 kilobits per second at 1080p 60 fps the difference between them is truly night and day if there's a single thing that you take away from this video it's that at lower bit rates the turing and venk encoder has been drastically improved we see noticeably less compression and blockiness between frames better defined edges and text is a lot more readable on turing this continues when we drop the resolution down to 720p at 60 fps at a bit rate of 2500 kilobits per second but since the compression isn't so bad here, the difference between them is less noticeable. Still though, the Turing and Venk does look less fuzzy and blocky, and it is a bit more pleasing to watch overall. Okay, so Turing and Venk is definitely better in terms of visual quality compared to previous generation and Venk, but how does it compare to X264 encoding on the CPU? Let's start with a streaming comparison with less compression, and that's 720p 60 FPS at 3500 kilobits per second. Also, this comparison is being played at 50% speed to make it a bit easier to compare. So here the comparison is honestly quite close, but I'd have to give the win to X264 medium preset here for overall visual quality. I would say that the Turing and Venk does look better than the X264 fast preset all the way to the left. And similar to our other comparisons, the new NVENC encoder doesn't suffer from as much visible compression and fuzziness. X264 medium doesn't suffer from as much compression artifacts either but at the same time, it's able to retain much more detail in the textures, which are otherwise smoothed out by the new NVENC encoder. That changes drastically though, when we increase the amount of compression and here the results truly are mind blowing. So here the bitrate is fairly constrained with a 1080p 60 FPS stream running at just 3,500 kilobits per second. And the Turing NVENC encoder far exceeds even what we can achieve with X264 medium. Let's take a look at a couple freeze frames here to analyze things further. So, Remember, this is the same resolution, same bit rate, same frame, just different encoders and settings, yet the difference is night and day. Whereas both X264 encoded streams are an absolute mess, the Turing and Venk is able to recover the majority of the original frame. Sure, some detail is lost and the image is overall quite smooth, but at least it is a representative of the actual original frame. The damage value is actually readable here and the opponent can actually be made out. This follows on to pretty much any scene and side-by-side -side comparison that we can make. And the bottom line is that the Turing and Venk encoder is an absolute beast when it comes to encoding low bitrate streams. When we bump the bitrate up to something more adequate and honestly realistic, like 6,000 kilobits per second at 1080p 60 FPS, I'd say that the Turing and Venk is a bit better than X264 fast in most comparisons due to less fuzziness and noise, but it does lose to the X264 medium preset in my opinion, seeing as it can't retain as much detail. In this comparison, for example, there's much more detail retained on the player's glove in the X264 medium, but NVENC still looks better than the X264 fast in this comparison. Again, NVENC overall does look marginally better than X264 fast here, although some small details are smoothed out and lost in the roof and the background. Overall, it seems when the bitrate is just adequate, the new NVENC encoder is slightly better than X264 fast, but loses out to X264 medium when it comes to detail. The bigger picture here, of course, is that for the marginal reduction in performance, I'd say that the slight loss in detail at moderate bit rates does make the new Turing NVENC encoder a much more superior choice even over X264 medium. I think we'd all rather lose just 5% of FPS on average instead of 30% for the trade-off in less detailed textures. If you are forced to stream at lower bit rates due to a slower internet connection, for example, this is where the Turing NVENC encoder really dominates even over X264 medium. 
At those lower bit rates, there's definitely more legible text and overall a better representation of the original image. Now for those thinking of upgrading their current GPU to a Turing GPU for streaming, that's something that I would encourage, especially if you want to stream at lower bit rates. However, if you already have a recent Nvidia GPU with an NVENC encoder and you can stream at higher bit rates, then honestly, the upgrade might not be worth it if you're already getting the frame rates that you desire in games. If you were planning on upgrading your GPU anyway, and you want to get into streaming, then Nvidia's Turing GPUs are a great choice. And to answer the title of this video, yes, there definitely has been an improvement. So I'd love to know your thoughts down below on these streaming comparisons. And if you were like me and you were quite surprised to see what you know a Turing GPU could achieve with those lower bit rates, I mean, it really does make sense uh, for streamers who have a slower internet connection, even picking up something like a GTX 1660, that does make for you know a suitable and watchable stream in my opinion, even better than streaming on uh, X264 Medium like we saw. Also, since this was our first look at streaming benchmarks, let me know if you'd like to see any settings that we looked at changed. Uh, if you have any feedback for this testing moving forward, definitely drop those in the comments down below. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below and I'll see you all in the next one.